So what I'm going to do is just show stuff. <laughs> and if you have a question, you can ask. Um, so this is the mill at Buck Creek. This is one of the very first photos I took. Um, and for those who don't know, Buck Creek is like a spiritual place for me. It's where I started going to Buck Creek. It's like walking distance from my house. And it just literally changed the course of my life going down there. Um, it made me, it really increased my appreciation for nature, for noticing things around me, um, getting me out of my own depression, out of my head. Um, at the time, I was taking care of my grandmother and just had a lot of life stress. And it just really helped me kind of focus in on what I need to focus on from moment to moment, day to day. Um, and I was going there religiously. And when I started photography, I started taking photos of what I was seeing and kind of relating my thoughts to what I saw. So it's a very personal journey. It's a very personal thing. And it's something that anybody can do. And people do. You know, I'm not the only one that goes out in nature and appreciates and learns something from it. This is not new. <laughs> this is so not new. Um, but I kind of wanted to give you guys a little bit of atmosphere before I go into the stereos because it's hard to capture it in a stereo. It's hard to capture that that whole feeling, which is the only thing about stereos that frustrate me is that it's, it's this little bitty window. Um, so to me, it loses a little bit of the scope. And that's something that I've been working on is trying to get a little bit more of the feel in it. Um, lots of beavers at the creek. Uh, for me, they symbolize rebuilding. I've got a lot of uh, photos of the dams. Unfortunately, I do not have a stereo. Um, and there's so many times I would go down there and the floods would wash the dams away and the beavers don't care. They just go back and they just start rebuilding again. And so I would be sitting on the bank just thinking, oh, my, my life is just completely falling apart around me. And they're over here going, yeah, please. And let me move this stick and completely rebuild my home again. Um, and it's just, you know, lessons like that that if you just really sit with it, it becomes a part of you. This is Blue Hole at winter time. Yes, I'm in Alabama. Yes, we do get snow. Um, not often, but we do. Uh, everybody who knows me knows my fascination with water drops. And these are all old photos. These photos are probably seven years old. Um, this is when I really first started getting into photography. This is the first stereo that I took of a flower. And you can instantly see something wrong with it. That would be that there's really no depth at all. <laughs> so this is when I was first learning. Um, at the time, I was working solely with Brian May. He was the one that got me into all this. And that's that's a whole other story. Um, I wasn't on any social networking sites except Facebook. Uh, I just happened to find his uh, soapbox page. And at the time he was touring, this was probably 2014, maybe. And he was in Texas uh, taking stereo photos out of his hotel window. And I'm looking at it going, what do you mean this is 3D? This is not 3D. What are you talking about? And I finally emailed the site and said you know can you direct me towards book or a website or anything and he emailed back and said okay let's talk and we've been bothering each other ever since um so a lot of times i would start taking a photo and i have to send it to him and say okay is this 3d i had no viewing device i couldn't free view i had no clue and he finally got fed up and sent me an owl viewer so that i actually could see what i'm doing um so this was an early attempt and this was four months later, um, which is actually one of my favorite stereos. Uh, and this one uh, has been shown at NSA. Um, it was shown in, I don't know if it's called Photoplasticon. I don't know. It was in a, a Poland. Um, it's been in a couple of magazines. Uh, this actually might be formatted more for big screen. I think I got the wrong slide. Uh, I've got a format for a card, for a big screen, for a book. And so it's a little out to the edges. 
Um, and a very popular trend on, and I'm sorry, if anybody's asking questions or anything, the sound is really cutting in and out. Is Am, am I being heard? Yes. Yeah, okay. You're fine. You're fine. You're okay. five five. I, I keep hearing like little blips and I can't see any of you because it's all full screen. So I, I don't, I'm guessing. <laughs> um, but anybody who's on Instagram knows that blacking out the background is a really big thing. Um, and there's apps, apparently there's phone apps now that will make it a little bit easier to do. I don't know, I couldn't, I think uh, Jane Luna West has a particular app that she uses that she told me, and I can't remember what it's called. I couldn't access it because I have an Android and she's got an iPhone. But this was like five, six years ago, and what I did was enlarge the image and just go pixel by pixel and paint. And I completely painted out the background because it was so messy. It was, you know, you had spots of sunlight everywhere and there was a bush way over to the right in one side and then in the center on the other side because I, I moved as much as I could to try and get some pop. And so the flower was great. Everything behind it was crap. So I just got rid of it. Um, and, uh, I've done that with several, usually, I'm sorry. Okay. Um, usually if I'm getting rid of a background, it's because the background is just really bad. It's not, I'm trying to make it better. Um, this is another example here. Uh, and the photos that I do are cha-cha with uh, Sony A5000. So trying to get photos of anything living is near impossible. Um, this was a lucky shot. And again, I've got the background blocked out because the sun was sitting in the water in different ways. And it just, you know, you can clone, but there's really just so much cloning you can do. Sometimes you just got to get rid of it. And so I did. And I think it makes it pop better as well. Um, another example, uh, the back of a rose. I got tired of taking photos of the front. <laughs> So I went to the back. Again, you know, this is a miniature rose in a miniature rose bush. So, you know, just crazy conflict of, of background. And you can actually see, and it's something that David Koontz would get onto me about, uh, the airbrushing. He said, clone it, clone it over, to clone it over. You've airbrushed too much over here and it's you've taken out too much edge. And I'm like, yeah, I know. Um, so now I'm doing that. It takes me a little while to follow his advice. Uh, looking down into a thistle. Now, a lot of these kind of come under the, the heading of paying attention to detail, which you're going to do in photography anyway. And you're going to do it even more in stereo photos. You have to, or you're not going to get a good stereo photo. A lot of mine are still very questionable. I am not a technician by any means. I have a lot of, of errors and discrepancies in my photos. Um, and this one, when I look at it larger, it's not as noticeable, but if you kind of reduce the screen down, you can tell under that top water drop, there's a certain light that just doesn't really agree with your eyes. And that would be an example of airbrushing out the background or you know painting it out or something, um, burning it so that it's darker. I've done that a lot too. Uh, but really, I mean, this is it's the ugliest plant you can imagine looking at until you look down into it after a rain or the morning dew, and it's absolutely amazing. And it almost looks like something from another world. So that's another thing I like to do with the macro photography. And anybody that does this, no matter what your subject is, you know that it forces you to slow down. So it's really almost a meditative um, practice to do this, it really gets you out of your head. If you're having a really crappy day, grab your camera, grab your, your phone and just go and start taking photos. By the time you're 15, 20 minutes into it, you know, you're, you're going to feel better. You're going to dismiss whatever it was that's making you feel bad and you're going to be drawn right into exactly what you're doing right at that moment. And that's really kind of um, the pleasure for me. You don't have to be in nature to do it. You can do it in your kitchen if you wanted to. 
um, you just really take your mind off of whatever is bothering you and put it directly on what you're doing at that moment. Um, another example of airbrushing, it doesn't have to be black. It can be any color. And I think this one, I honestly can't remember when I initially airbrushed it. Um, I think I was just trying something new. All right. So apparently we're going to have a um, conversation about uh, stereo windows <laughs> in the next meeting. Um, this is one of my first cards. This actually went uh, in 2015 to the uh, NSA 3D con. And you can see there's window violations all over the place. Um, and at the time I was like, yeah, okay, but, and now I'm looking at it going, oh my God, I have got to figure out if there's a way to realign this. Um, again, it's water drops, it's macro photography, which I love and is very, very difficult to do with the cha-cha. Um, it's dew drops in a spider web. Um, the caption at the bottom and see the wonder what I had done was kind of write a story with my cards, write, write a verse with my cards. That was just about capturing the magic of nature. Um, and some of these, I haven't messed with this image since, so it's still actually in the card format. <laughs> That's Buck Creek. Um, another thing that kind of poignant about all this is this view no longer exists. Um, this is Buck Creek of 2016, I want to say. The two trees to your right have fallen. Um, that stone is, uh, is still there, but it's covered up with a lot of debris that just will not go past it. It's not as clean looking because we've had so much flooding and uh, lost a lot of trees. It's not quite as uh, I guess, fantastical as this is. Um, and I play with this image a lot. I'll play with dodging and burning and coloring and uh, just try to kind of convey my emotion in the piece. I have no problem with editing a piece. I love to edit. I love to try to make it look artistic or like a painting or old. Um, I think that's part of the, the joy of it. I don't think it has to be an exact representation of what you see. It's a creative process. It's self-expression. It's exactly what your mind perceives it to be. Um, again, this is at Buck Creek. Uh, you might have to really lean back. This is kind of subtle, but this is one of the marshes at, around the creek. Um, again, just the way the light was hitting it, um, caught my attention. So I took the photo and it, it is another earlier shot. Am I giving everyone enough time to kind of look? Yep. Okay. Same card as before. You know, I, I said I kind of mess with it. Um, so this one's bright a bit actually formatted for Instagram. Um, so I went from the, the style of card being with the two images further apart and kind of uh, this fuzzy border to closer together uh, because mostly I post on Instagram these days. Um, I don't do Facebook much anymore and I don't do Twitter much anymore because Twitter scares me. So I pretty much stay on Instagram. Um, so my original style was the big black card with the two smaller images in the middle and kind of the fuzzy uh, window, which to me looked more like if you took a strip of film, like movie film, rather than just two stark images side by side. Um, so I'm, I've kind of met in the middle with this now at this point. Um, again, playing with the light a little bit. Uh, I always follow what's automatically there. I look for shadows and I look for highlights. And then I will burn and dodge, which is lightening and darkening parts of the photo. Um, a lot of time I will darken the water just a little bit because it makes that reflection pop out. Um, it, it really just depends on the photo and what I want to uh, bring out of it. <clears throat> Excuse me. 
another example. Um, this one, I think this one was in Stereo World. Uh, Buck Creek again. And obviously very tampered with. <laughs> this was during the autumn, and I honestly cannot remember if that light in the back is the sunset or trees. I think it's a little bit of both. Um, I upped the saturation, the saturation, I can speak, blah, 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 and I did a lot of noise reduction, which really softens the photo and it gets rid of that, that kind of pixeled look um, and gives it a little bit more of a painting look. So if you're wondering, you know, how to make it look more like a, a painting, raise the noise reduction as high as you can. Um, this is very obvious where I dodged the light and really made it spark. And it just, because I was trying to, again, to go for a fantastical scene, play with your stereos. It's so much fun. And there's another one that I didn't include in here that I actually, um, it's not liquidify, what is that? It's a certain tool that you can use to kind of drag the pixels around and kind of blur them. And it's great to do with a stereo, except that it, can kind of mess up the movie a little bit, but it's fun to try, try it. You know, it's, it's all in fun. Another one that I did, um, I took this at dusk. Uh, what I would do would be to drop the um, exposure way down and boost the highlights and go from there. Obviously the fireflies in the back, I stuck in there. Um, and again, because I just wanted to play and get artistic with it. So this was this was actually taken at uh, Botanical Gardens because there's not really any fern at Buck Creek. Wish there was. It'd be beautiful. Copperhead. So just to you know, I no, I was not this close. <laughs> um, I was standing over it and it was just staring at me, and I was staring at it, and I was like slowly getting my camera going. Yeah, okay, I'm trying to make this work. Um, and got really lucky because again, you know, if you're doing a cha-cha trying to take a picture of anything that moved and thank God this thing did not move is challenging. So I was actually very proud of this. And this went to a, a NSA competition as well. Um, exhibition competition, the, the card thing. I'm not afraid of snakes, but this had been a spider. It would have been questionable, but uh, snakes don't bother me. And yes, I do have stereos of spiders. You're going to have to back up for this one. Um, this is Kusa at the uh, Wildlife Center where I volunteer. And going to Buck Creek actually helped put me on the path of volunteering at the center because we have these owls at Buck Creek. So it does, in fact, tie in. The, one of the first photos I took at Buck Creek was a, a barred owl. And, it, you know, the more I saw these birds, the more uh, I felt this tug to do more. And so now I, I volunteer there. I'm on the education team. I'm a raptor trainer. And I've just started back in the clinic. I've been cleared health-wise to go back in the clinic again. So I'm doing that now. Um, so I cannot explain the hold that birds have. I, I, I wish I could. I, I can't. Um, they're just, it's a very spiritual thing, a very otherworldly thing to go out and see this bird staring at you. This wild bird. Now, obviously, Kusa is not wild. But to see this in the wild, I mean, it makes your heart stop. To see the dragonfly on that flower makes your heart stop. To see a hummingbird. You know, it just to see a beautiful sunset, it's just, it puts you in a completely different space. Um, and really, that's kind of the whole idea behind Spirit of Nature, is finding that connection between yourself and everything that's out there. You know, we try to distance ourselves so much, and we really have got to get back to realizing that everything struggles, and we struggle with it, and we're all in this together. Uh, yellow crown night hen. This is at the creek. This actually reminds me of a viewmaster reel. <laughs> I don't know. I took this and uh, again, I kind of reverted back to my original style with this one. And got lucky. He just sat there for me. 
All right, frog on a pond. This one, this is actually something that really taught me a huge lesson. This was taken the same day as the, um, the lotus with the, the dragonfly on it. I was so intent on trying to get that shot. And I was like, you know, spent 20 minutes trying to get a good shot of, of what I was looking for, which was that. And my husband's over there going, Carlene, 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 <clears throat> Carlene. And I finally looked and I saw this. And it really made me realize you can't just go into something with one particular mindset and expect it to turn out exactly like you want because you're going to miss a whole bunch of other stuff. You're just going to miss so much. You've got to be aware of everything going on. Don't let yourself get so bogged down and making something perfect that you miss something else that's outstanding. Um, so I got this shot. And that, that's really, I call him Kermit for obvious reasons. I wish to God I could figure out how to put a little banjo in there. Um, but, you know, that every time I see this, it reminds me to stop trying to be so perfect. Stop trying to make things like you want it to be and just look around. I mean, this, this frog don't have a care in the world. He's just sitting there enjoying the sun. He's good. You know, he's good. That's how I want to be. I want to be like this frog. Not a care. All right. Transition. Change is a big theme in my work. Um, I love leaves. I actually have an account that I haven't really advertised much um, because it's really just for me where I put all of my leaf photos. Um, but this was taken again, 2015. I'm showing a lot of older stereos because I do have so much on Instagram. Um, this is all of my older but what's interesting here is the change from several years ago to now. Now this is my current style. This is what I tend to look for. It's more stark, it's more real, it's more, um, I, I don't know. It's, 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 just, it's just more real to me. Again, I've got the dark edges. Um, I still try to kind of stay within my, my particular motif, but I don't always. And it's still, you know, it, it still represents change, that ongoing uh, thing that you know, the only thing you can guarantee in life is change. And here's another example. This was taken in October. Um, so visually, light-wise, I still have the shadows. I still have the uh, the highlights. This is actually a bit brighter than I would like for it to be for the computer. But I again, I edited the picture for Instagram, which shows up darker, or it seems darker because it's a smaller screen. Uh, so if I was to present this in a card or something like that, I would have darkened it a bit. This was taken with my phone. Um, I'm pretty much exclusively using my phone these days rather than the camera. It's just easier. And since I tend to do a lot of close up, you know, it's, it's just right there. Um, but again, you have your, uh, th this is more the atmosphere that I've been trying to go for for years. Okay. More uh, examples of sort of the artistic edit. All I did here with this leaf was up the saturation and adjust the lighting a little bit. Upping the saturation really brought out a lot of blues that you didn't even know was in that leaf. Play with the saturation, you will amaze yourself because there's a lot of colors and things that you don't realize is there. And it's not a false representation. It's not, oh, I went in there with my paintbrush and colored this blue. It's there. It's just our eyes don't really perceive it unless we do certain things to it. Um, and this, this is probably one of my favorite leaf photos, which actually I've got to put in my, <laughs> on my page. I don't think I've got this one on there. Okay, Buck Creek in winter, coming to the end. And this one, it was, it started out sleeting that day, and then it turned into snow. And I remember it was so cold 
and I was walking along the creek and watching these little spots of ice float down the creek. And they were melting in the creek because it was a little bit warmer. The water was a little warmer. So you had this little uh, disc with a little piece of ice in the middle of it. it. Looked like little individual boats or little individual islands just drifting down the creek. And it really struck me how it was all so individual, but it was all going in the same direction. So the poet in me <laughs> looked at that and said, you know, that that's us. Everybody tries to maintain this little island and keep them themselves and have their own little world, but we're all on the same journey. We're all going the same way. We're all still connected. Um, and it just kind of gives you that little moment of, you know, oh, that, that's what it's, it's showing me, that this is really what life is. And then you look up at the trees and everything is just so quiet and you just hear the snow. And it's like, it's telling you everything's okay. Just stand here and appreciate this for a moment. And you do. And it's just, it's absolute magic. And you can tell this one is a crop because of the bottom. <laughs> Sorry. But again, at the creek, it's only snowed twice um, since I've moved to Alabaster. I've been here about 15 years, and it's only snowed two times enough to where I could really get good photos like this. All right. And this is the most recent one um, taken with my phone a couple of days ago. This was at uh, Wheeler Wildlife Refuge. My husband and I went to see sandhill cranes because they migrate through by the thousands um, and went to the swamp. And I saw this and I was like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, this is, this is going to be a thing. Um, so again, format it for Instagram. So you could definitely tell the difference between formatting for a card and formatting for Instagram. Um, and I'm just, you know, I just want to share it because it is purely a phone edit. Um, and you know, it just, this is the, the journey continues. Everything that I started doing at the Creek, I now do everywhere, no matter where I go. Um, and it really has been a sort of a good change point of view um, I look for, I'm probably obsessed by it a bit. I look for lessons in everything. I look for guidance in everything. And that might not be healthy, <laughs> but um, that's just, uh, that's just what I do. That's, that's become a part of who I am in my thought process. And I don't think it's going to go away um, anytime soon. So uh, I'm going to see, I think that is the last one. I think that video thing is after that. So um, how do I um, just go ahead and click stop sharing? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Oh, that was great, Carlene. Um, lots of uh, comments in the in the chat. Um, oh, really? <laughs> as to um, yes, just the the beautiful. Let's see. Let me get that. Oh, okay. there we go. Okay. I, I got you back. All right. Yeah. I, I definitely had a favorite. It was one of the, I think the first leaf one that you showed toward the end. That was, well, it's a toss up between that one and the ferns with the fireflies <laughs> for me. Okay. Yeah. But, um, yeah. So um, I, we have, a few minutes if anyone has questions for Carlene. Uh, we have about maybe about three or four minutes for questions. I have and one question. So. What was that, Ian? I have a I have a few questions, yes. Okay, we might have to save some of them for uh, for the end. Um, but yes, go ahead. Well, um, the most pressing one, I mean your your images are just so beautiful and have sort of a, an ethereal, otherworldly quality to them. I'm wondering, have you ever considered shooting infrared? If I ever considered? Shooting infrared stereos. Shooting, 
I'm sorry, it's, it's really cutting it out. I apologize. In, infrared. Oh, infrared. Yes. Um, you know, I've converted some to infrared. Um, but well, that's, not... Yeah, that's quite different from from using actual proper, you know, infrared yeah. film and a, a rat and black filter and all that. Um, right, right. Yeah, I've, I've, I've only done, um, you know, where you put the filter on it because sometimes I'm curious about how that would look. But I've only ever shot with the the Sony or now with my phone. So, oh, so you don't how would you do that? What's that? How would you do that? Well, you'd, you'd want to use a, a film back, a film camera, right? Mm -hmm. so use an infrared film. Um, okay. Which you have to be extremely careful. You have to dark load it entirely um, mm -hmm. when you're processing it and everything. You, it can't even get the slightest bit of light. It's it's a little touchier than your typical black and white film, which which can you know tolerate a little bit of exposure to light. Right. Um, but you, you basically you put a rat and black filter on, which is you know you, you'd have to be on tripod because uh, I, I believe it's a, a ten stop. Um, 10 stops, 10 EVs um, removed. Um, and then you, you take your photos, you know, your, your stereo pairs. Um, you probably pull it off with a stereo realist. You just have to modify um, modify the uh, each lens with a rat and black filter. And then, um, then you wouldn't have to do it as a cha-cha. Um, but in, in any case, then you process the film uh, and, you, and you print from there. Um, mm -hmm. it, it creates naturally sort of, it, it pulls from nature sort of some of the ethereal things that people use computers to do. Okay. Um, and, and some, especially with, with foliage and things like that, some amazing, um, Details. You, you, there are a lot of tutorials online on on how to shoot infrared. I know it's possible on digital too. I just I I don't know my way around digital well enough. Yeah. Even I'll, I'll make there. a comment on that. Um, you, there, you can do it digitally, and obviously it's a lot easier. And the, the easiest way. And David Kuhn, since you're in touch with him, uh, can probably give you a little more info. Uh, we both years ago uh, bought very cheaply uh, digital cameras, you know, single cameras that have been modified with, I guess, is it like an infrared filter inside the camera that's been removed or something like that? But the camera itself has been permanently modified and you can do cha-chas with that. And David Kuntz has entered some gorgeous infrareds uh, taken with that camera. I haven't used it as much as I really should. I forget that I have it, but uh, it was under a hundred dollars to buy it. And I think the fellow, or the, there's a couple of websites that explain about doing digital and sites that sell already modified cameras uh, in all kinds of price ranges. So that would okay. be, an easy, that's an easier way to get into it than film. Yeah, yeah. Well, I you, you've got my curiosity up, so. <laughs> yeah, and also, if you're doing the close-up cha-chas, uh, Stereo Realist would be a, a pretty wide base for doing that. So, right. uh, so yeah, that's another thing to consider. Cool. But your color is so beautiful. Uh, Thank not you. that there's a beauty to black and white as well, but uh, yeah. I love your love your photos and thank you for sharing. Thank them. you. Thanks. Appreciate it. Uh, we have time for maybe one more question for Carlene. Um, and don't worry if you still have questions for her, uh, you can type them in the chat and we'll pick them up after the next presenter. But uh, we can take one more now if anyone has one. Well, I've just got another one if, if nobody else does. Um, <laughs> which is, well, first of all, I think it's amazing. I, I didn't know your work was all done with cha-chas. How do you deal with like on a not wanting to throw your camera in the water or whatnot uh, sense when you you know hike like I've hiked nine miles uh, and climbed a forty foot rock wall to to get to a, a, an outdoor location I wanted to shoot with with the fall foliage around an abandoned gun factory 
um, at, at uh, Six Mile Creek in Ithaca. Uh, and then it, it turns out, I'm, you know, so I leave at four in the morning. I, I hike out there. Blue hour starts to come on right when I right when I get out there, and it becomes overcast and ruins both the blue hour and the golden hour. Like, how do you deal with that? Nature photography, I basically gave up on because you can't control the lighting. And if you, you know, you make a trip all the way to Ithaca and then you make a trip all the way up Six Mile Creek and then the lighting sucks. Like, mm -hmm. it just, um, it's curious. Well, I mean, with me, I, I'm literally just taking photos of what's around me. Um, I don't really go with, if I go with a plan, like you're talking about, I'm going to go to this place and I'm going to take this photo. I'm usually disappointed regardless because I have a tendency to build it up in my head. It's going to look like this. I'm going to do this to it. I'm going to put this effect on it. It's going to be terrific. And then I'll shake the camera or something because I, I don't like using tripods. I know sacrilege, but I don't. Um, and I'm not technical. So you would be amazed how many shots you, you might not be amazed. I don't know. There's so many shots that I just don't get that I'm used to it. <laughs> and that goes for stereos or just regular, you know, I still do. Uh, I'm still primarily a 2d photographer rather than 3d. Um, I'm just used to not getting the shot. When I get the shot, I'm like, Oh my God, I actually got the shot, you know? So, but with me, if, if I go and I can't get what I planned for, I'm like, all right, I've got all these lenses. I'm going to go find something else. I'll find something on the ground. I'll find the leaf. I'll find a bug. I'll find a flower. I'll find something because there's so much around you. You can't not find something. And that's kind of how I trained my mind to be. So yeah, I well, messed this up, but there's so many more opportunities over here. You don't, you don't pre-visualize and plan. You just sort of live in the moment and okay. Right. Right. Yeah, I, I, I roll with it. <laughs> Thank you so much, Carlene, uh, for sharing um, and just the stories, the the really personal stories behind your work. So, Thank um, you. yeah, a Thanks. lot of uh, <laughs> Hope really it made sense. important lessons. No, it totally, totally being sent. Uh, <laughs> very, very timely, too, right now. So thank you so much. And um, thank you for uh sticking with <laughs> <laughs> yeah um yeah hopefully uh we'll that time off yes it was it was <laughs> oh yes i didn't know what to say <laughs> yeah feel free to scroll through the chat and see everybody's um wonderful comments yeah. on your work and if anyone else has questions uh just go ahead and type them in and just say it's for carlene and we'll pick it up